Well, Cassie filed that, uh, the lawsuit. And I believe you, I've seen you speak on Kim Porter about stuff right. you've seen in the past. So at, at right, what like, point, go ahead. I, I was saying, at what point did you start to see stuff? The first incident that I found out about Puff and Kim Porter, I was called by Kirk Burroughs and Paul. It was Kirk Burroughs, I think. And I had to go over to, Puff didn't have no security. He was over St. Luke's Hospital. Him and Kim had got into an incident where she had took a court screw and cut his wrist, his white, his right wrist. So I was asked to go over there, and right then I found out that they had an altercation. Kim looked like she was bruised up, and Puff had his wrist wrapped up in a, a t-shirt that was constantly there was just blood everywhere, and come to find out. She had cut, I think, probably an artery or something in his wrist with a corkscrew. So that's the that's the first altercation I I, I, I know of Kim and Puff having a certain situation. Pretty crazy thing to go through at that point. Well, that was his, you know, that was him and his girl. And I didn't see the altercation. I only saw the aftermath of the altercation. And it seemed like she probably got the best of him that time. <laughs> to me. Okay, so now you go through this incident with Puff, and you know, you you know, you kind of see the aftermath of everything, man. You know, what's your kind of general thoughts about everything that you go through at the time? On that particular situation? Yeah. Well, you gotta realize is that to Puff was a part of our crew. And at the time, he was an underling. And he's not the puff daddy that y'all know and y'all see. Do you understand? He still was like a nobody trying to make it to me. You understand? So in, in that point, you know, he was still trying to be around the same gang, even though he had Big and Craig Mack for Bad Boy Records. They hadn't blown, they hadn't blown up yet. Craig Mack record was the one that was being played and hot. Biggie was not, you know, Biggie at the time. You know, uh, the notorious Big. So they Puff wasn't even trying to even rap. He was just trying to promote, help the street team, and help everybody to blow Bad Boy up to what he wanted to be. So, you know... He's not the same individual that y'all see now than he was back then. You got to realize this was like in 90, this was 91. And then I left him alone. Then after that Suge Knight thing happened, I came back. So this is like 94, 95. You understand what I'm saying? So he was just happy for uh, somebody like me who had that status of those different crews to to be his big unk to look out for him so nobody would do nothing to him. So now, if you're speaking about allegations with Kim and everything like that, all a lot, a lot of that stuff start happening uh, after, uh, I think around the time Ms. Lopez and him was breaking up. Oh, okay, so that that's when you've seen things kind of get worse or you just started seeing things in general? Well, just, I, I wouldn't say worse because Puff never did things like that around me. He knew I didn't play that. He tried cursing his mother around me and I checked him on that. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to realize he had other bodyguards and he wouldn't do certain things around me because I'm a law enforcement officer. And I wasn't going to let him do that. I, I've been a pro, I did... 27 years as a parole officer. And I'm like, at the time, our relationship, I was like his big unk. So I'm I'm not going to let him do stupid stuff to get himself in trouble or me in trouble. So a lot of that stuff that has probably happened after I left, you understand, other than, you know, the swinging stuff that he did with Kim and other guys and everything. 
What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.